DOWC is a rapidly growing service contract provider whose expansive line of F&I products includes Adventure Guard, specialty protection for power sports vehicles. Voted the number one Dealer's Choice Award dealer-owned warranty company provider. Learn more about DOWC's customizable F&I offerings at DOWC.com. The LS2 Thunder Carbon. If I am approved, world championship technology, lightweight, aerodynamic, outrageous margins. Visit ls2usa.com. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another awesome episode of On the Throttle with Jackie and my buddy Josh over here bringing you all of the new news going on out in motorcycles and power sports. We've got a great show for you today. Some very exciting news, some new bikes, some sneak peeks, and then some of my favorite events are back on the calendar. Thank goodness 2022 <laughs> is coming on through for us with some awesome events going on in motorcycling. What do you got going on in your neck of the woods for today's show, Josh? So someone left the gate open at the retirement community and it's going to turn out to be something very, very cool at the end of June here. And then on top of that, there is some helmet news that is not vaporware. So I'm excited to see that too. <laughs> You're going to bring us some non-unicorns, Josh? Are you going to bring us some actual real products? Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see, right? We'll have to wait and see. So uh, let's get let's get down to it. For first things first, a little bit of news that has been kind of lighting up the internet in a really interesting way. And a company that I really wanted to take a second and talk about on today's program, an Asia-based company, a Chinese-based company called Xinjiang. Xinjiang is the parent company and builder and manufacturer of lots and lots of different products out here in motorcycling. They've got lots of partnerships with bigger, bigger brands that you are probably, well, definitely more familiar with. Uh, they're building all sorts of stuff going on in China. And the story for this week that has been burning down the internet is a couple of different things. One is that they are releasing a cruiser bike, but we won't get too deep into that today um, that's rumored to be a partnership potentially with Harley Davidson. I'll bring you that breaking news, news the minute I know about it. But the news for today is their partnership with the company Benelli. So Benelli has been making this very slick looking adventure bike called the TRK 502 for the past handful of years. And it actually is selling really well in Europe. I am not particularly um, super familiar with this bike. So I've once they released this week's news, which is the 702, which is on your screen right now. So a little bit of a displacement bump. This is the 702. I want to talk about it because that bike is sexy. What a beautiful, beautiful looking machine. We've got it in this awesome green. I'm sure it's coming in a couple of different colorways. I think I threw a slide in here also that shows it with some luggage so you can get a little bit of a better feel for it uh, with its full dress on, as they say. If you want to throw that next slide up there, there you go, Miss Ashley. Thank you so much. But now you get the full adventure vibes, right? You are ready to go to Starbucks. You are ready to go get coffee and be Mr. or Mrs. Adventure person out there. I'm just giving you grief. I love my adventure friends. Uh, but I thought this was really exceptional and very beautiful. And then the next slide, if you want to throw that up there, Ashley, is going to show some of the 502s, the smaller displacement that have been doing really well in Europe, which again, I, I'm not super familiar with, but I just want to take a second and talk about these bikes because I think these are really, really beautiful and are going to be at a better price point than some of the adventure bike players. And the other reason why I want to talk about this bike is because being in that 702 size now, which is the new bike. These are the 502s, but the 702s, which is the new bike that's coming from the folks at Benelli. Benelli is making big strides in this country of having more dealership presence. So these are going to be available here in the U.S., which I think is very exciting because it gives you a great counterpoint to some of the other handful of middleweight adventure bikes that are on the market right now because this space, this category, I think is really on fire right now. I think it's been burning it down with that Tenere 700, um, with the GS 750s, GS 850s for the folks over at BMW. I mean, there's just a lot of players that are entering this more middleweight space right now, and I think that this is just just an excellent, excellent option to be able to have in your pocket if you're out shopping for that middleweight bike. Now, a little bit more from the press release. Ash, if you can go back to the previous slide, it's going to show that green bike because that's the new new, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. So this bike was talked about a bit um, last year at ICMA. 
This is a parallel twin adventure model. There was discussion last year that the t this TRK-702 might be on the way, but indeed it is confirmed. Um, and the funny thing, though, is that it's going to compete with itself because there already is a TRK-800 available as well. So very interesting bike. This is kind of the twin that's used in the 752S Roadster and the Benelli Leoncino 800. So again, this bike does have a lot of provenance. This bike does have a lot of DNA and a lot of other history going on. The weight is rated at about 485 pounds. The brake or the yeah, brake horsepower is about 75 brake horsepower for the 702. So I think that this is a really interesting option. Option. I did take a glance real quick because I got really excited seeing a 502 and 702 adventure bike and I was like is it something a little shorter is it something for some of the shorties like myself no no it's not it's at 32 and a half inches seat height so it is a pretty tall seat but I still am very curious to go and check these out what do you think about these adventure bikes from the folks at Benelli Josh so they, Benelli's done a great job of bringing value to the market. And it's stuff like the crash guards and all the other stuff that you see on it. If I remember right on like the 502, it's like a $300 option is all, which to me is just absolutely amazing. Um, the, the value proposition that they bring in this space is great. And like you said, the uh, I mean, it does give people a way to get that adventure bike without necessarily the the making it rain all over the place. <laughs> The, and the, bet, your bike, and bet your bike money. <laughs> correct. It's And it's funny because, and the way you said that too, is I will specifically, when I'm on the motorcycle, have gas station coffee because I do not want to be accused <laughs> of being the, the, the coffee guy. So that way I will suffer through gas station coffee for it. But nonetheless, I'm really excited to see these here. Um, would love to swing a leg over them to see how they compare and everything like that because it's like I said it's a it's value and it's all about what you get for your dollar and what's worth it for you and I think there's plenty of space there here. Yeah, for sure. And I know, you know, just diving into the comments of some of the articles about this particular bike floating around on the internet, um, you know, this company, Xinjiang in general, was kind of kind of taking a little bit of a beating out there um, in the forums and in the comment sections, of course, which take that always with a grain of salt. Um, but here's the real real is that every well, not everything. A lot of things are made in China and in Asia right now for a handful of different reasons. But one of the major ones is that way these manufacturers can sell their bikes in Asia, which is a huge, huge, huge market compared to the United States market and dodge effectively that import tax because if it's built in that country, they don't pay taxes for that bike to be sold in that country. So it's a bit of a business maneuver for sure. But number two, these companies that we are familiar with and know and love would not be in bed with companies that are Asia based if the quality wasn't there you know they there is a partnership their name is still going on these machines in one way or the other so there is decent quality control going on i know a lot of folks were like you know these bikes are not good quality blah 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 i really just want to take a second and just deflate that a little bit and let people know that i think the quality of these machines right now coming out are very very high and very very good and again with all of these partnerships i think it makes it a really interesting proposition because at the at the base of these bikes you know these there's engines made in China now for or in Asia now for every single manufacturer. Like I mentioned at the top yeah. of the program, um, KTM, uh, Harley Davidson is is making a partnership effort with them. BMW makes a bike in Asia. Yeah. I mean, everybody does. So this is kind of in my mind. I am a frugal gal. So to me, it's like this is a way to get into that into that game at a, at a much more reasonable price tag. So I'm here for it, man. But anyway, that was one of the stories that was burning down the Internet a little bit. And I think that bike is absolutely beautiful. I would definitely, definitely love to ride that. Um, and that is my first story for today is this new TRK702 for the folks at Benelli. What's your first story for today, Josh? So we've got, as I mentioned, the the retirement home that someone left the gate open. <laughs> Um, that is, and that is a really good thing for the Goodwood Festival. So four names that, I don't know if you've ever been around motorcycles, you may be familiar with is Mick Doohan, Kenny Roberts, Kevin Schwantz, and Wayne Rainey. They are all going to be on track at the same time on some of their championship winning old two-stroke 500cc 
motorcycles. Um, now, one of the things that's so cool about this is putting these guys all on track at the same time is first off is just, a, I mean, when you count the number of championships between all of them, it's you basically have the 80s and 90s right here. Um, on top of that, the other big part about it is, is Wayne Rainey was paralyzed from the chest down years ago in a motorcycle accident. So they have found a way. I remember the story. It was about two years or so ago that they put him on a motorcycle. This is the first time that he's going to be able to be on one of his championship winning motorcycles, which to me is absolutely awesome that they're able to do that for him and get him back and get him, get him that, I mean, just in that mental state of, uh, yeah, th this is what, this is what I did. And this, uh, I mean, just what what a great thing to do for him. So if you aren't familiar with the Goodwood Festival of Speed, it is essentially, it was founded in 1993 by Lord March. Um, it's basically taking everything that was ever of any importance, vintage in racing or automobiles or motorcycles, and putting it on track, whether it be on track, whether it be on the hill climb that they have, but basically it's taking everything out of the museum and making it run past you at least once. Um, so that way you get the sights, the sounds, the smells, all the other stuff in that. So to me, I mean, it, it, it's just cool for the, to, to resurrect some of these things and to maybe you weren't able to go to the 1983 GP. Well, now you can get a sense of what that's <laughs> like. Um, if it's June 23rd through the 26th. So if you want a good sense of this, and Jackie and I talked about this beforehand, one of the best, best, best videos, I'm not even going to say, I mean, about Goodwood on YouTube period is if you look up Troy Corser at Goodwood Revival. He is riding a 1929 BMW. It is a hardtail. It has like virtually no front suspension. It is a tank shift and he rides the wheels off of it. And the whole festival is stuff like this. He's 125 miles an hour on a 1929. Um, just so cool to see. So I, I, I mean, I, I'm assuming just in your travels, this has gotta be a bucket list item for you, Jackie. This is totally a bucket list. So Goodwood is this festival of speed in the spring, and then the fall they do the revival, which is a much, much more antique yeah. and vintage-themed um, show. But this event, this festival of speed, you're right. While it features a lot of vintage and antique stuff, it also has very modern stuff. It's turned yeah. into quite a scene now, and folks are bringing all sorts of bikes and cars to kind of premiere, debut, because you're right. They do get to put them on track in front of thousands and thousands of spectators, and then a global audience this is quite a scene this is quite yes. an incredible thing um i this is absolutely on my bucket list if i if i had any time this year i would absolutely fly over in a second i love that it's this holy trinity of uh wayne rainey and who was it king kenny and who was the third on your list I don't, I don't remember who your third was there's they've actually got the trinity plus four so there's Dewan, robert schwantz and rainey ah, so right. i mean that's yeah, so i mean those four guys i mean if you just got those four guys in the same room it's it's yeah. huge let alone putting them all on a track at the same time yeah and i again i think it is so powerful to have wayne rainey riding one of his bikes yes. i have been watching i do follow him on the social media he's pretty active over there uh fyi he also is the president founder director i don't know exact his exact title ceo of moto america so he still is yes. very very heavily involved in motorcycles yes. still to this day um he i met him several years ago at the quail gathering which is another very very um premium type event here in the u.s out in carmel california uh, which is going on actually next month and it's fantastic uh, anyway uh so i had the i've had the chance of meeting him he's absolutely lovely and uh, since i follow yes. him i've been watching that they've made this adaptive bike for him to ride so i think that this is very powerful very very cool i definitely will be following it on the internet and you're right the troy courser video is it is absolute oh, it's, YouTube it's gold. 
um, spoiler alert at full chat at full song on this bike that is like because it has no suspension going down a straight he passes his competitor and gives him a sweet pat on the bottom to let him know that he's going to be passing on the left hand side uh, it is absolutely hilarious go check it out yes. on the YouTube it is one of my favorite favorite motorcycling videos of all time anyway so this is super good news about this good wood festival of speed again it is happening in England by the way this is a British event um, it's happening in the UK it is June 23rd through the 26th and in more proof Josh that the world is healing another handful yes, of awesome European sure. events have been added back to the calendar and they just got announced this past week the first one of which is going to be the um, German event called Intermot Intermot is a huge huge international Big. trade show again uh, Intermot and Eichma which is kind of its equivalency ish over in Milan and Italy have been canceled the past handful of years. COVID, Schmovid, it's been canceled for forever. I've missed it desperately. These are amazing, awesome shows. Anyway, Intermot is back this year. This is happening um, in October. The 4th and 5th are press only. October 6th through the 9th, this is open to the public. This takes place in Cologne. Um, this is a fantastic show. This is debuting of new bikes, new machinery, new product. This is also an, a, a global custom bike competition is under that roof as well there's parties there's events i mean this is just a total hoot um i'm not gonna lie i'm already checked my calendar because i would absolutely fly over to go see this because i'm such a trade show junkie and i love seeing stuff um and premieres and launches and i love this kind of stuff but more importantly because there has been no trade no huge global trade show in like two years now everybody's coming to this even bmw has put this show back on their calendar to go and show bikes at which they removed themselves actually before covid they decided as a corporation that they were going to take a step back from the trade show market because they wanted to focus more on marketing in a different way more at the dealership level anyway yada yada um so they even bmw is coming back to the table and is going to be showing bikes at this event which means it's a really big big deal Anyway, that was announced this past week, which is excellent. And it means that, again, the world is healing. It's a circle of life. Josh, bike shows are coming back. My next show that I want to talk about, though, is also World Ducati Week. Also was announced to put back on the calendar. But actually, I know I've got another slide for Intermont in here. If you want to throw those up to let people see what Intermont looks like. There you go. So big, huge crowds. Josh is absolute favorite. He loves jam-packed convention centers. I'm totally, <laughs> totally joking. He hates he hates this kind of stuff. I love this kind of stuff, which is why we're a great pair. Um, so Correct. this is just one of the shots. And then this is a shot from a couple of years ago, one of their custom bike shows. Again, like I mentioned, this is a huge, huge global custom bike show. This is the championship. The finale is here at Cologne. So these are the best bikes from all around the world. And I love going to European bike shows because like their aesthetic is so different from what we see here in the US. I just love this kind of stuff. So look at look at all the weird crazy bikes in that image, right? Anywho, my next big announcement this week that just got announced as well because they were kind of waiting to see what was going to happen with COVID is the folks at Ducati. Every single year they have World Ducati Week. It is in beautiful Misano on the coastline of eastern Italy. Um, this is going to be happening. They just announced it. It is July 22nd through the 24th. So that is going to be World Ducati Week. This is a great event. This is all things Ducati. Ducati. I have had the good fortune of actually going to this. This is massive. I could not get over the parking lot of red. Like, as far as you could see, it was one of the craziest, most bananas things I've ever seen. They bring all of their, like, MotoGP riders and their World Superbike riders. They bring all of their champs to come out and do parade laps. As a Ducati owner, you can also sign up and take your bike out on the Misano circuit and do parade laps there. This is just a really, really excellent good time, and it's just a love of all things um, all things Ducati, all things red, all things La Dolce Vita uh, for the folks over over at Ducati. So I thought that was really, really exciting news. And one more time, that event is July 22nd, 23rd, and 24th in Misano, Italy. What's your second story for today, Josh? So first off, I got to make the comment on the Ducati day. Can you imagine how, the, if you just start everything up at once, the yeah. especially when you go back to the old dry clutch days, 
if you started all those up at once, how it would sound like a bunch of bolts in a paint can <laughs> in a paint mixer. So, and I mean, but in the most beautiful way. So I've, I've got to throw that in there with that. So my la- my second look at story you throw in, is- Look at you throwing shade on that dry clutch. Shame on you. Oh, I, I love that noise. Absolutely love that noise. No, no, no problems with it at all. Is, uh, yeah. So you guys all know that I, I am a big fan of helmets. I not only love what they do, but I also love the fact that they cover up this ugly mug. Um, I know Jackie <laughs> has petitioned are, multiple times for me to wear a helmet during the show. We are all grateful for that, Josh. We are all Correct. grateful for you wearing a helmet. <laughs> Correct. So Showy recently put on stage their Optic Sun helmet. So what's kind of interesting about this is it was on display in Osaka and the Tokyo motorcycle shows. So they, they're showing that this is possible, but is it necessarily feasible? That's going to be the big question in this. So they first showed this off in 2019 at this uh, consumer electronics show out in Las Vegas. So they have gotten to the point where they have now trademarked the name Optic Sun. Um, it uses a projector in the chin bar. And if we take a look at the next slide here, it's kind of interesting as what they're doing with this. So the projector is in the chin bar. And it points up at that. You can see it. You can see how they're showing the screen there. It points up onto basically a little screen that's in front of your eye um, there. So that way it gives you a heads up display. So we've had some, let's call them possibly failed heads up display items before from companies like Scully or NuViz, which the NuViz was an add on system. Scully had it integrated. What this uses is that's almost like an, a separate eyepiece that you can flip up and out of the way if you don't want it there. There are times when I am out on the trail or something like that, where I'm like, I don't want to know anything else. Just nothing. The headphones, everything come out. Just let me hear the bike and, and the noises around me. Same thing. I'd, I'd just rather not have the distraction. So this gives you the option of it. One of the other cool things about this is that this uses the smartphone connection. So rather than having its own GPS module and everything like that in the helmet, which trying to find room in a helmet for stuff like that, is often very difficult. What they've done is they've basically made it Bluetooth enabled. So that way it gets the information via Bluetooth, sends it up to the projector that sits in the chin bar, which projects up onto the screen there, which is focused like it's down the road for you. To me, this is one of those things where it's great because I, I'd love to have something like this because there's a lot of times where I'm constantly having to check down look at the GPS, see where I'm at, see if the road's coming up, whatever. And you never know when that deer's going to jump out in front of you, when the road's going to change, when a car's going to jump out in front of you, whatever. This allows you to look ahead, never take your eyes off the road. You can see navigation, you can see speed. I love the idea too, because when I get annoyed with it, I can flip it up and out of the way if I want to just ride. This shows a lot of promise, but we got to see if as I mentioned before, it's feasible, meaning can we actually afford it? So is this going to be, is this going to help you keep from getting lost, Jackie, or no? <laughs> Absolutely not, Josh. There's, there's literally no hope for me. Uh, no, I, I, I joke. I, so I think this is very interesting. As much as I love my vintage yeah. bikes and old machinery, I am also a gadget nerd. So I love stuff like this. I, I yeah. you know, once they started kind of there was whispers and rumors in the mists about these sorts of this sorts of technology happening a handful of years ago. Um, I have been waiting for this to pop up and for these uh, pun intended. Uh, I've been waiting for these to pop up and waiting for somebody to like skin this cat and figure this out. And then, you know, is this safe? Is this, is this necessary? Like, I, I mean, I don't know, but I would definitely, I would definitely check one out and I would definitely be interested to yeah. see about it. So, but right now it sounds like it still is in the unicorn phases. This is not in anybody's hot little hands yet, which is unfortunate. I was hoping you were going to bring me a finished product today, but we will all keep on the watch. Yeah, but it is closer. And I mean, if they were showing it at the Tokyo show, that means they're, they're 
they're getting ready to do something with it. So um, yes. we will all have to kind of wait and keep our eyes out for that one. But don't you worry, because Josh and I will be bringing that to you here on the program the minute we hear all of this breaking news. We love spreading it and sharing it with you guys out there watching at home. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, you can watch all of our previous episodes. They live forever out here on the internets, either on the YouTubes or on the Facebooks, no matter where you're tuning in. You can always click back through and watch our previous programs. Um, and as always, feel free to say hey in the comments. If you've got any questions, we always go back through and check them out. We're more than happy to chat with you guys. So thank you for tuning in. One last little note before we close today's show. If you are out on the West Coast, another awesome event is also taking place this year. Um, and it is this weekend. And that is in Portland. It is the One Moto Show weekend going on in beautiful downtown Portland, Oregon. So if you love looking at awesome custom bikes, make sure you put that on your calendar. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. We will see you guys next week. Thank you for watching.